Elon Musk is blatantly wrong about hydrogen fuel cells and in this video I'm going to provide you guys some proper data that shows the true advantages this technology provides over batteries. And I'll also be explaining how critical it will be to transition to a truly 100% renewable electric grid. And since this is an investing channel, I'm also going to share the individual stocks that I'm personally buying to gain exposure to this hydrogen market, which is growing at a much faster rate than most of you guys probably think. But before we get into it, guys, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So first things first, I want to address the big elephant in the room, which is someone like Elon Musk saying that hydrogen fuel cells should be considered hydrogen fuel cells, meaning that it's a technology that is very dumb and that can't be applied to the EV industry. I've definitely seen a lot of people on Twitter and social media take Elon's comments to heart and dismiss any progress that's made in the field of hydrogen and solely focus on battery technology and thinking that batteries are going to be the ultimate solution for solving our carbonization problems in this world. And for those folks, I want to give you guys an important reality check. If you think about it and put everything that Elon Musk says into context, his words start making a lot more sense. The first thing we need to remember is that Elon is running a consumer EV business. And in that specific market segment, hydrogen technology doesn't make that much sense because it's a very low capacity factor business, meaning that the usage cycle of a car like the Tesla Model 3 is typically much lower than a more heavy duty application like in the shipping industry, the train industry, or obviously the heavy duty class A trucking industry. And so in those specific segments, hydrogen can make a lot more sense. But at least for what Elon Musk's business is in, it definitely does not make sense from a cost and efficiency perspective. And I think that is why Elon has been saying that hydrogen is stupid and that it's dumb. And I think a lot of people are taking his words out of context because the consumer EV business is only a small fraction of the total addressable market where hydrogen fuel cells can be applied. And this brings us into another important thing that many hydrogen haters completely forget to mention, which is the fact that hydrogen is a fuel. It's not a form of simple energy storage like a battery, meaning that you can use hydrogen just like gasoline or natural gas to power industrial and logistics applications, unlike with a battery. You see, hydrogen is an energy carrier that's actually used in a lot of manufacturing processes today, like in the creation of steel and glass. So the methane reforming method that a lot of companies use to make hydrogen gas is actually very useful for those manufacturing processes, just like we burn coal and natural gas to make electricity to power our houses. But the difference with hydrogen is that hydrogen can be made using solar panels and wind farms with no combustion. And this is called green hydrogen, meaning you can essentially create a fuel that has the capability of natural gas, coal, and potentially gasoline with solar panels. Think about that for a second. That is a massive opportunity. You can get the flexibility of oil without needing to dig it out of the ground, transport it, refine it, and obviously deal with the fact that oil is a scarce resource. Whereas as far as I know, renewable resources are going to be here forever. And for the foreseeable future, we're going to need to learn how to use these renewable resources effectively to power our daily lives. And it's in this energy storage segment, which is where hydrogen is going to make the biggest impact. And as you can see, because of that, the global demand for pure hydrogen fuel has increased substantially since 1975. And now as the use cases of end user products like heavy duty trucks, stationary backup power and energy storage systems rise, the demand for this fuel is only going to increase. And as for all the people that bring up the argument about hydrogen being inefficient, and that being a big reason why this technology cannot be a critical component of the decarbonization race, this chart should clear up a lot of those problems. You see, when people compare hydrogen with batteries, they always tend to compare it in a one-dimensional viewpoint. 
Instead, you need to look at this from both a time standpoint and a power standpoint. And as you can see, at least for a wind study that was conducted in California from January to December, batteries, which are represented by 21 million EVs, which obviously are not even close to being on the roads today, we're only able to store excess renewable energy, which is represented in blue, in terms of a power output from around negative 15 to negative 50. Whereas on a time horizon, we're only able to store around four hours worth of that energy, meaning that the total capacity of energy that we're able to store, which is excess energy made by wind farms, we're only able to store a very small amount as compared to hydrogen energy storage. And this block right here only represents conversion of natural gas plants that are existing in the infrastructure to hydrogen plants. And so as more plants and refineries and storage materials come online, this box is only going to get bigger. Whereas obviously with the EV case, we're already looking at the best case scenario, which is where we almost take the capacity of all 21 million cars in the US and converting all of them to EVs. And as you can see, because hydrogen is a technology that can store energy for a much longer period of time with a much higher capacity due to its high power density, we're able to on average capture a lot more energy over the long term, which is obviously something that we can move on over to the deficit side of this chart and allow us to really manage solar and wind penetration into our grid. And this will allow us to capture a lot more clean energy and offset natural gas and coal based electric power plants. And this is certainly a big reason why firms like Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley have been extremely bullish on hydrogen as they've conducted a lot of research into this industry over the past two years specifically. By 2050, these guys expect a 650 fold increase in electrolyzers in the European market only, which obviously should translate to an even faster adoption in the United States given the excess amount of renewable energy that we produce and the massive heavy duty application pool inside this country. And as you can see, they do a very good job here of summarizing the three main application pools where hydrogen can make a massive impact, which include power generation, meaning storing excess renewable energy, the heavy duty transportation segment, and obviously the manufacturing segment, which is where we use hydrogen gas to make steel and glass. Now, to answer the big question as to which stocks I am personally buying to take advantage of this rapid market adoption in the next few years. Well, you guys probably already know the first one, which is Nikola Corporation, which is the company that develops heavy duty class eight hydrogen trucks. And the second stock is Plug Power, which is another company I've talked consistently about on this channel, which is the current leader in the material handling fuel cell space and they're also entering the massive green hydrogen electrolysis business with brand new hydrogen plants coming online in the US over the next couple of years. This brings us on to the third stock, which is Bloom Energy, which is a company that develops solid oxide fuel cells that are essentially used for power backup and power generation applications by businesses and enterprises. And last but not least, the fourth stock I own in my hydrogen portfolio is Advent Technologies, which is the smallest market cap stock in my entire portfolio today, and probably the riskiest, but I do think that the reward potential is enormous because these guys have access to a very unique technology where they can potentially 3x the power density of current fuel cell systems while allowing them to run on impure hydrogen like methanol and natural gas. This company actually recently entered into a technology assessment agreement with Hyundai, which is obviously a massive player in the heavy duty hydrogen fuel cell application sector in Europe and in Asia. But anyways, guys, make sure to drop me a thumbs up if you found some value from this video. Let me know down in the comment section below your guys' thoughts on the hydrogen fuel cell debate that Elon Musk has brought up. I hope I was able to give you guys some clarity on why hydrogen technology really makes a lot of sense for the renewable transition that we are all looking forward to. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.